Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to the Dynasty Wonderland podcast. That's right, with me, the Matt Chatter Ryan MK. And of course, by my side, as always, the salary captain, the March Heron. That's right, Aaron Stewart. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Oh, man, I'm doing good. We just finished the good old Thursday night football game. Got some crazy stuff there. And for people that watch the video, uh, yeah, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties here. Uh, I got a camera that's not working. Don't worry. Next week we'll be back in action live. You can see my wonderful beard. But for now, it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, we will. We will miss the beard on this one. And it's, it, it's funny because when I first started out, even though the Dynasty Wonderland music was playing, I, I, I was almost feeling the miscellaneous debris. My other podcast, make sure you check that out. It's been a couple of weeks since I had a new episode. One is coming though, but it kind of felt, I was <clears throat> getting some miscellaneous debris vibes. Like I'm, I was feeling like I was flying solo, you know, but it, no, no, there's a big giant A right there that to remind me that Aaron is is indeed here uh you just can't see his his nice beard that's all and we'll get through it there you know it changes things up a little bit it's fun it's it's fun i'm just this mysterious voice right right but we do miss the beard and 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 speaking of the captain mr captain make sure you all check out there's two new episodes out of the captain's cabin that's right uh, a complete with theme music now it's a fucking fantastic that's right and we got one you got your buddy dustin martin on and you're yes. talking one with jerry judy's injury and the other with uh austin eckler's hammy issue so good stuff make sure you people check that shit out absolutely i won't spoil anything on that but i'll say it's worth checking out because it oh, yeah. gives you some perspective into some things that we, the fantasy players, usually don't really consider. So Dustin really brought some fire. And I got to shout out his Twitter real quick. That's at Martin underscore Dustin C. The dude knows some things about some injuries and he's a fantasy football fanatic. Definitely need to give him a follow. Oh, yes, he is pretty, pretty awesome. And uh, I definitely recommend checking it all out out the captain's cabin it's good stuff so what the thursday night shows are going to look like from here on out as it being just a quick reminder mad caps we're going to do three shows a week every day we have football we're doing a podcast okay it's fun fun awesome a little exhausting but also fun <laughs> but here's what we got so sundays we're going to do the recap of Sunday's action. Mondays, we're going to come at you with a little Monday night review, Thursday night preview, and a little waiver wire chatter. Now, for the Thursday episodes, which is what we're doing tonight, we got the Thursday night recap, and then we're going to have a little game we play each week just to get us talking about some of the upcoming games for that week. So, We'll be doing a little draft, taking turns, picking out particular games we'd like to talk about. We're going to throw them on our little wheel of fun, our little wheel of topics thing. And we're going to spin them in order to find out which way in the order to talk about them. So that's kind of the plan. Tonight, we're going to do it a little bit differently just because I can't see my buddy's face and his wonderful beard once again. So. We're going to get right into the Thursday night recap, and then we're just going to do a little bit of a preview for this Sunday. But the Thursday night game, NFC least battle, the Washington Foreskins, <laughs> or football team to the, to the lane. Uh, and going up against the New York Giants. And I got to say, there were some aspects of the Giants, uh, particularly Daniel Jones, that looked good tonight. They looked a little more like what I was thinking they might look like. And uh, Washington, I mean, you got to give it up for my buddy Taylor Heineke looking good because I was, I was thinking early in this game, is this game really going to be all that interesting? But did get interesting. It seemed like it really picked up in the second half and Heineke – I, there were some points when I'm just like, come on, this is not the Heineke 
that I saw against the Bucks. This is not the Heineke I would see when he was a part of the Vikings roster. It, 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 but there was a point where he just started hitting shit. He did have that one goofy thing where he fell down and, and lost the ball. And it's a good thing. The penalty bailed them out there. Cause that could have been disastrous, but he otherwise looked pretty solid and he came back and won him the game. It turned out to be a fun game. And, um, yeah, man, I, I, I don't know. I did, Like I said, I think one of the things I really I liked seeing Heineke play better down the stretch, and I liked some of what I saw out of the Giants, I think were my two biggest takeaways out of the game. Go ahead, Aaron. Oh, you're, those are your two biggest – sorry, I, I, I misheard that. One. So, no, um, that's all right. Yeah, in, in watching this game, probably the thing that, that surprised me, pleasantly surprised me, was the quarterback play in terms of not turning over the turnovers. Two quarterbacks combined for Very one true. one interception, one turnover in this game. Daniel Jones, spotless there. That's been an Achilles heel for him. Right. And I mentioned on Cody Carpentier's Discord, there was, there was a player prop on underdog fantasy, an over-under on fantasy points for Daniel Jones set at 15.55 fantasy points. I'm like, oh, that's pretty low. And yeah, last season in two games, he didn't hit that against against the against the Washington football team. He was close in both games and it was it was weird. It was like one game he didn't pass for many yards at all. And then the next game didn't rush for many. And then I I mentioned, I communicated with a few people in there and I said, you know. If he puts both of those together, not a whole lot of passing yards, but that rushing upside Mm -hmm. with 200-something passing yards, he should clear that. And lo and behold, he cleared that. And his number one target is Sterling Shepard. That's a big surprise. Spent all the money on Kenny Galladay, and Shepard is the guy that's getting the targets and the production. And I also took some heat on Twitter because Larky, Josh Larky, mentioned that hey maybe sit Saquon Barkley this week they don't look too good in week one we know he's coming off ACL injury and Mm. hey a Thursday night football game means you play Sunday Monday you have to recover maybe two days of practice and then you go right back onto the battlefield that's the NFL (laughs) that's NFL football on a Thursday it's like yeah I don't see that and The Giants don't have a good offensive line. That's not so much for Barkley's production. But in watching the game, I saw a lot of blocking from Barkley because that's usually – that's what you got to do. If you don't have a good offensive line, you have to scheme your protection. It's an an extra tight end or, in this case, a running back. So, yeah, I had some people really call – you know, question my credibility uh, for sitting Saquon Barkley. And I'm actually rolling with Naheem Hines in the league. I've got Barkley. So <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to take much for Naheem Hines to outscore what Barkley get. Let's see, 69, nice, 69 yards and two catches. So under nine fantasy points at PPR. Yeah. But fun game. Yeah, it was a fun game. And and for Barkley, you, you know, I, I got him wrong last week because I wrote in the infirmary that, uh, it, you know, if he's good to go, I'm playing him. And he did, he did even less last week. So, uh, you know, I was kind of under the impression Barkley in general would probably start pretty slow. But uh, when it came time for week one, I, I'm like, man, if you got him, how do you not play him? But uh yeah, it's it's definitely like you said, it because of the situations, got to do some run blocking and you, you know, if they're going to be having to throw more from from being behind or having to come back or being in a bit of a shootout then it, you know, I I just it could be rough for Barkley for a little bit, but I feel like he'll still get it going at some point. Like, oh yeah. Um and I don't think it'll be long. So but uh yeah good to see Heineke going I did, I got to bring up the stats cuz I didn't fucking look at the stats Barkley was that I cuz I know Heineke had the interception yeah you're right that was a pretty turnover free game and all of that yeah right Jones weird did with take these two some stats <laughs> Jones took a few sacks he took a lot of sacks in this game but yeah like Oh the, that's true but, I didn't 
thing number one was just he didn't fumble the ball. That is, it's almost a guarantee <laughs> he fumbled. So for him to clear, to stay clear of the turnovers, it was impressive. But man, that, both teams, that was a crazy sequence to end the game. It was like, which mm. team, both teams were trying to like lose the game. <laughs> Right. They had Heineke's one interception was was late in the game, like just this horrible interception that gave the Giants the ball on like the twenty yards out, and then what, what was the the Giant, Giants went offsides on the final kick? You know, mm-hmm. Washington missed it. <laughs> Giants were offsides, and then lo and behold, the kicker gets a chance to redeem himself, and he kicks the game winner. <laughs> crazy kickers no i did i also you mentioned sterling shepherd yeah that was a guy i i had my eye on it was probably about midpoint of the off season and i just felt like i got him in a lot of best ball um but i just don't think in a lot of leagues i got him rostered and that was one i was thinking man I think he could be really good this year because i've always really liked sterling shepherd i got off of him because if you remember, he was having concussions for a while, right. remember? And um, it was just kind of one of those points where like, man, if he gets another one or two, like he's probably done. So it, I just kind of, I kind of got away from him a little bit, but I've, I've always kind of liked Shepard. And it, I, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, Galladay, he got eight targets, three yeah. catches. <laughs> so it, it's like, but Shepard got 10, and then you got to love this. If you're, if you're a T-Mac fan, as I am, 14 targets, 11 receptions, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Heineke loves him some T-Mac. So. Yeah, and that was impressive, too. If there, it's, it's funny. There's still people that doubt Terry McLaurin's talent. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and this game should lay to rest any of that. The, the guy just kept making play after play after play. Uh, and, and the most impressive thing on that is, honestly, he was, he was matched up with James Bradbury of the New York Giants. And that mm-hmm. may not be a household name to casual fantasy football players, but it's come from your salary captain who's in his second season of doing wide receiver cornerback matchups, Bradbury is not a guy like if I see a wide receiver is going to be matched up with them primarily. I am not excited about, about the receiver. Right. I have to either temper expectations or just go, Oh, I'm sitting this guy. So that the production 11 catches on the 14 targets, as you mentioned for 107 yards and a touchdown. Wow. I and, and outside Logan Thomas, he's the only receiver that can really do anything that can make big plays. Yeah. And speaking of Logan Thomas, just shout out to him because uh, seven targets for him as well. Only 45 yards, didn't get a touchdown this week, but you know that Heineke looks his way. So that's, that's good news all around, but uh, yes, very interesting game. Um, much better than anticipated, much better than I anticipated. So there you go. The, the, the four skins march off to one and one and the giants. Well, well, they're Owen two. <laughs> I was thinking about, there's this comedian named Brad Williams. Do you know who this dude is? He's a dwarf. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think I've seen him before. Yeah. Man. I was listening to his shit at work. I think it was recently. I think it was probably last week, but uh, he was talking about how he's a baseball fan and they kept wanting him to put on this particular team's Jersey. And they thought he was just being a dick about it. And he's like, look, I'm not going to wear a Jersey that says giants on it. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm a little person. <laughs> I love so it. my I love it. lifelong enemies, the giants. I am not wearing a jet toe. Sorry. Sorry. That might've been so- lame. <laughs> Much funnier than when you hear him tell it, but I don't know why it just popped in my head. So anyway, that's, that's why I'm, they call me mad. See? <laughs> okay. So fun game. 
Let's get into a little bit of week two. Now, do you want to, Aaron, would you like me to send, do you want to send me your picks later or do you want to run through and pick them now? Oh, um, let's go. We can run through and pick, and, and picks, pick our teams. Okay. Some of these games, honestly, is going to be just my gut right now. And Oh, I'm with you. And it may change come this weekend when I've really dove into these games. So that's going to be fun to see. Well, I figure we'll run run through the list. There's a few games on here worth talking about. So as we hit those, maybe we'll chat a bit about them. Uh, And and I believe we both had Washington to win this game, right? I think so. So, you know, it was it was a little little tense because, yeah. And the closer I got to the game, I was these NFC East games always go like this. They're just crazy (laughs) stuff happens. And I sat there, I was like, you know, I think I'd actually take the Giants in the spread. And so that would have been profitable. But ultimately, this is my division. I'm a Cowboys fan. I just, I enjoyed the craziness and sometimes straight up bad football. But this game, entertaining, but I wasn't going to bet on it. I was really glad Washington could at least make both of us look good with picks. Right, right. There you go. Okay, so we start with the early games, Sunday Broncos at Jaguars. I am taking Denver, my friend Aaron. How about you? Easy on this one. Denver as well. There we go. Let's see some more action from Teddy Dugloves and the rest. And might I say, KJ Hamler, Albert O, get that bump up with uh, no Jerry Judy, you think? Yes, indeed. I'm really excited about Hamler. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because he was Pat- he was getting some love in the preseason. So, Patrick, Patrick is that guy? You know, a professional. He's going to play, but Hamler flashed a little bit. I'm intrigued. Me too. Me too. So next up, we got the 49ers, the Eagles. I'm actually going to take Philadelphia here, Aaron. Who do you have? Oh man, I will go San Francisco. But I'm surprised the spread's close on this one. But clearly, the Philadelphia sent a message to Vegas well, on the spread there because it's it is San Francisco's only a three point favorite. This is actually one of the games I kind of wanted to spend a minute on because totally. I really thought about this one. That, well, there's a few games I thought about, but um, this one in particular because man, that doll, that Eagles defense now granted i get it that the the thing with all of this is the eagles were playing the falcons i understand (laughs) but the eagles defense to me better than i anticipated maybe and i just really like what i see out of jalen hurts and I feel like he can continue to grow and he's got some weapons. Now they're playing with, I, I just, I really liked, even though against the Falcons, what they did last week. And uh, I think the 49ers, I mean, as great as we like to think the 49ers are, I mean, the lions damn near came back and won last week. Right. I mean, and that's the fucking lions. <laughs> and, and I just, uh, I don't know. I'm just the whole Jimmy G Trey Lance situation. It's that's, you know, going to be continuing a continuing thing until Trey Lance is starting, you know? So I think that there's just a lot of factors where the 49, this is the way I'm trying to look at my picks from here on out. And I should, maybe I shouldn't share this, but (laughs) the way I figure is some of these teams or I mean all of it I can't imagine anybody going on undefeated so they're gonna lose so like the Niners are gonna lose some games this is definitely one they could I would think I mean they play in a tough division so I I don't know I I got Philly in this one but I completely understand why I'd be in the minority there no and and honestly some points can be made for Philadelphia San Francisco is far from perfect and uh, and of course most notable is us being fantasy football players, there was the Trey Sermon. Trey Sermon, just a, a healthy scratch that caught mm-hmm. everyone off guard. And then the the really odd, strange Brandon Ayuk situation where, where 
is this just coaches showing some tough love, like really strange stuff. So I, I could see, I could see Philadelphia being a sneaky pick there because Philadelphia has got some good things too. I'd like to see a little bit more from Philadelphia because I still just don't really know much about them. They look great on offense against a Falcons team that let's face it Falcons. I mean, just looking at the Falcons spread in their game against right. the defending Super Bowl champs where they're almost a 13 point underdog that that should tell you some things about them. So with Philadelphia, I'm going to say, Hey, show me. And, and I will pleasantly, I, I will be happy to be wrong on this one. I want to see the trends on this one. They clearly came out with a game plan in week one. I'll be watching this game. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see how it goes and we'll move on to the Cincinnati Bengals at the Chicago bears. Now I've got the Bengals in this one, just because I feel like, uh, this is how this, and this isn't what I want to spend a bunch of time on, but I think it's funny that this is just how I imagine this game going. The Bears fans are rabid. They're ready to boo Andy Dalton and scream for Justin Fields at the first sign of trouble. And the Bengals, they got an offense and their D's not bad. They're going to go, I mean, you know, they took out Minnesota, who I don't find them to be a playoff team, but they're not one of the worst teams in the league. So I, I got, I'm a little impressed with Cincinnati. And I think they go in there and start handling the Bears. And I think we might actually see Justin Fields this Sunday, but I still don't think it'll be enough Cincinnati all the way in this one. And, and I'll take the, the alternate uh, narrative on this one of it's Andy Dalton revenge game against the Bengals and not that Andy Dalton's going to go and and do anything like at, at best like he may have like a Daniel Jones type performance minus the rushing where he just kind of the easy passes the if Chicago is going to win it's going to be by giving the ball to David Montgomery but admittedly he looked good in Sunday mm-hmm. night football he looked yes, he did. really good and I'm going to take a home team here playing in Chicago all right and it, just imagine how upset Bears fans are going to be when Andy Dalton wins a game and it just delays the inevitable. I'm with you. Uh, like anyone that has a brain knows Justin Fields is going to start. But Andy Dalton holds him off for one more week because he gets the W. Okay. Uh, I, and I know that is definitely a narrative out there. I, I just feel like it's going to go the opposite way. He's going to want that revenge. But it's Andy Dalton <laughs> and the kid Joe Burrow's coming. And I just – the Bears' defense isn't what it was. And uh, I could just see the Bengals getting a little ahead and Dalton trying to bring the Bears back and shit just going bad. And that whole – everybody in that stadium just fucking booing the shit out of him like you got it. I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting. We'll see how that one turns out. Okay. Absolutely. So Bills at Dolphins. This one I just want to spend a minute on. And I'm actually going to let you pick first because this is one I haven't marked yet because I, I'm a little, I'm slightly worried about Buffalo after last week. And the thing is, is that I feel like divisional matchup on the road, it should be scary for Buffalo. But on the other hand, it's the Dolphins, and they didn't do much to impress me last week either. <laughs> like right. over, overall, like I, I mean, they beat the Patriots. That's at the end. The Patriots, you know, starting out with Mac Jones, the rookie QB. So, it, it, you know, I don't know. I just feel like it. It feels like a scary week for the Bills, but it's hard to be scared for them of the Dolphins, if that makes sense. Right. And the thing on this game is Miami is no Pittsburgh. Miami maybe can become a playoff team. They still have to kind of show that because I'm with you. Like, in watching the Miami, they didn't really impress me much. And I'm going to take the more talented team on the road, Buffalo Bills. It's the Bills know you can't start 0-2. Like that is it. you can come back from it. But it's so difficult. This team has too much talent. 
tasted so much success last year. I think they they fix they fix what they need to fix from last week. And they come out, they get a road win against one of their division rivals. I'm with you because I, the, I was I was considering going Miami if you went Buffalo, but you're right. They can't start 0-2. And if they're going to be what they were last year, they have to win this game. And unless – because the Dolphins have a good defense, but their defense isn't on Pittsburgh's level of defense. Right. And unless Tua goes – completely banana sandwich this weekend i mean i i just yeah i don't see it so yes i'm with you buffalo on that one i imagine we'll be a uh, lockstep on the next one too Patri- patriots at the jets i'm gonna take the patriots are you gonna agree or you think the jets find a way to pull this one out you know as much as i want to root for the jets they're already hit hard with injuries you gotta yep. go patriots <clears throat> there you go and then we've got the Raiders at the Steelers. This one I actually find interesting. Um, I got Pitt winning, but I am curious to see. Um, and I guess that would, I feel like maybe, uh, hopefully we're weaving enough fantasy in this while we're <laughs> making our pick. Well, I'll try and do that better. Uh, for this game in particular, uh, I, I'm sure a lot of people would like to see more out of Najee Harris, but I, I want to see if the Raiders um you know if they're gonna be actually a team that can be in the mix or are they gonna be you know what they know they're kind of up and down you know what's the deal with the Raiders the the and, one oh sorry go no go ahead the, the one certainty with the Raiders is uncertainty that they That's can go very and, true. they can go and beat top teams they except for Darren Waller Darren Waller is the Darren one Waller is the one certainty. We know he's <laughs> yeah. going to get his production. But, yeah. but we saw last season. Last season they beat the Chiefs. They beat right, the Super true. Bowl champions. And yet the, the, the team would they win some games that they probably weren't supposed to, and they lose games they had no purpose losing. And yeah, it's very true. I really think this comes down to when you look at these two teams, Mike Tomlin is always going to have his Steelers ready to play yeah. we know their identity i know if just from watching game one it's it's very simple they're going back to old school pittsburgh they're going to run the ball heavily with Najee harris they're going to rely on defense and with the raiders what, what are they because they since gruden's come back he's wanted to run the ball heavily now game one they had to abandon the run because they got down and started started having to pass. Now, Raven secondary fell apart due to injuries. Pittsburgh, though, relatively healthy. They're, they're mm-hmm. not perfect on that one, but, man, Las Vegas is going to get punched in the mouth in this one. Steelers are going to handle them easily, in my opinion. I agree. Now, let's go with uh, Rams at Colts for the next one. Uh, this one. I'm just going to spend a quick second on because I have a hard time with this one too. I, I feel like the Rams are just going to keep gelling and getting better as the season goes along. Uh, but I have a hard time. Like the Colts, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely picking the Rams. I just, I, I feel like the Colts got to show me something a little more, but I, I don't know. I, I I'm not big on Carson Wentz, but I feel like, we got to give him some time here. I mean, he, he missed the entire off season. Uh, you know, I know a lot of us were bummed out. No Paris Campbell production, you know, last week. I mean, let's get this dude some time, this offense, some time um, because they haven't been together really all that long at all. <laughs> so, and they got a bit of a rough schedule. So, uh, you know, I definitely want to see a little more out of the Colts, but I expect the Rams to take this one. Um, I do think Sony Michelle will have a better game this week. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I got for this one. And you know me, like the Colts is a team I root for because I love how they do business, but also like Baltimore, it's a team that's dealing with a lot of injuries. Like now their right tackle, Braden Smith has a foot issue. It's like, Oh my Eesh. goodness. Yeah, like a, another hit to an offense that can't take any more hits. Well, yeah, and, and it's good. Sorry, yeah. I, no, no, no. Gonna, go, go ahead. 
I was just going to say quick, it, it's going to be hard for them to get any of that continuity and, you know, really gel together with this kind of shit happening. So <laughs> it's just, go ahead. And, and, and watch the Rams on Sunday night football. Matthew Stafford really is that missing piece that uh, on offense. Like they didn't have that dynamic the past few seasons. So the Rams certainly can't afford injuries, but right now, I can't think of any like notable injuries. They've got their top tier talent is so much better than the Colts. The Colts have some depth, but their the Colts depth is being tested already with injuries. Give me the Rams on the road. Although I'm not sure about the spread, but if I'm just picking the teams, give me the Rams. There you go. Yeah, we're not doing what I figured we wouldn't worry about spread. Maybe we can incorporate that in somewhere down the road, but um Saints of Panthers is the next one. This one's easy. I got New Orleans. I do think the Panthers uh, are going to be a team that surprises some people along the way this this year, but uh, Saints are taking them out. And I'm actually going to go the other way on this one. I'm going to say Ooh. give me Carolina because they were in so many close games last year. Right. And they just happened to be on the wrong side of those games every single time and that game against the Jets wasn't pretty but the score wasn't as close as we might think on that yeah. there was yeah. some garbage time on that the Panthers are young that's that's a key thing they they they're young they've got young defense they've got their offensive skill positions are they're either young or like right in their prime and I see Carolina winning this game an important division rival game going 2-0, and and then we start to kind of talk a little bit about Carolina. They may be kind of fool's gold, but we always have those teams. There's a handful of teams that start off kind of hot. It's like, oh, is this team going to take the leap to the playoffs? I don't think Carolina's there yet, but they are trending in the right direction. I agree. I agree, and I think it'll be a hell of a game, but I, I guess for me, ah, having – rooted for the Vikings. I've seen the Saints up close and personal a lot, and I'm not a fan of them. But Sean Payton's a great coach, and they, in general, are a good organization, and they tend to always find a way to be in the mix. Now, they just embarrass the shit out of the Green Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Now, there's obviously some reasons for that, but I guess to wrap this up, make it quick. I'm just <clears throat> with with the, with what's going on in Louisiana, just everything wrapped up. I feel like this is just going to be. I hate to say it because I hate when this team is awesome, but <laughs> but I think they're going to be one of the better teams in the NFC. And like, because really, they have been with Drew Brees and. Drew Brees has been a shell of himself the past couple of years. And, it, you know, if you can just get Jameis to not turn the ball over quite as fucking much, like, shit, shit, man. I, I don't know. I find them, I know it's, you know, don't overreact over one week, but I'm just like, man, I could see them being just a very scary team. So I, I think that's what it is more for me. I did because I'm a believer in Carolina as well, Mr. Mr. Aaron. Perfect. Yeah. And yeah, it's going to be a fun game. I like to see because those are two teams, one and oh, someone's going to start two and oh. Is it a changing of the guard here? The Saints right. at some point are going to fall off and they overcame the odds last week. It's going to be a fun divisional game. Okay. I think we've got a few easy ones coming up. Texans at Browns. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm taking Cleveland, obviously. Cleveland as well. Uh, let's not spend any time on that. That's an right. easy one, right? <laughs> Same thing with the the aforementioned birds at the defending Super Bowl Bucks, Tampa Bay. I'm assuming Tampa Bay as well. Yeah, I yeah. mean, sorry Falcons. They got to look better than last week, but you're not gonna beat Tampa. It's gonna be tough to look better than last week against the Bucks. <laughs> All right, and then this one, uh, I'm pretty sure we're, we're go both going to take the other birds, uh, another bird team, the Arizona Cardinals, against, they're at home against the Vikings. Um, 
but I do, I, I do just want to see more of this Cardinals off. I'm just excited because I was just like, man, I'm so hopeful for the Cardinals, but like, I, it, like, I just I want to see it. I got to see it from them. like, give it to me. And they did. And so I'm hoping to see more of that. And it's just, in a way, I'm kind of like, yep, the Vikings are just, they're in trouble. I just think, you know, they're probably fantasy wise, uh, you know, you're going to want to play your Vikings because they'll probably get a handful of points trying to catch up. But, (laughs) but I do think this could be another big day for the Cardinals offense. Absolutely. And you're right. I'm with you. I'm locked up with you here, Arizona. The interesting thing coming out of this game is if Minnesota does lose and then they're 0-2, usually after week two, week three is when you start to hear which coaches are on the hot seat. And Mike Zimmer has always been, like the past couple of seasons, that seat has been a little warm. Mm -hmm. And they go 0-2, start we start going, uh uh-oh, is this when Minnesota decides we've gone as far as we can when Mike Zimmer is a head coach where they've been – a solid squad. They had that one, one year, the the Minnesota miracle, the Minneapolis miracle, but it's, I don't think Zimmer's the coach next season. And it's going to start with a loss on the road to Arizona. Yep. See, they might draw my interest back to rooting for them again. If they did the right thing, if they get themselves a fucking smart offensive head coach, and draft themselves a young ass QB because, you know, that was part of it a couple of years ago. I just was like, ah, oh, you're extending Spielman and Cousins and Zimmer, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they're, they've been in this pattern where they make the playoffs every other year. And this is the year they're supposed, this is the year they're supposed to make the playoffs. And I don't think they do. So, We'll see what happens in the future, but, uh, you know, they've got some pieces on offense. I mean, maybe they get uh, a better coach in there next year. I mean, because it's, I mean, Thielen's not quite done yet. And you got Justin Jefferson and Osborne's making a name for himself. Uh, You know, there's, man, like, there's some pieces there. So anyway, absolutely. We'll move on. Titans at the Seahawks. I'm going to go Seattle here as Russell Wilson, uh, uh, my, my guy, Russ. I, I don't even – this dude – I'm sorry, Aaron. Just give me a second. I find this dude so corny. Like, <laughs> yes. the, 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 he just – he drives me nuts. Like, I remember there used to be some talk about, like, just kind of like when it was the le- – when they had the Legion of Boom and them just kind of like, like looking at him like, what, dude? Like really, like dangerous, <laughs> like this guy, like it, it, he he's a bit of a goofy bastard. And, and, and you know, all that aside, he's one of my favorite players to watch play. And I do believe he's gonna be on a fucking. I don't know if he'll win it, but he's gonna be fucking MVP trail this year. That's what he's headed for. And so I'm excited to watch more. They're going to be able to do plenty against this terrible Titans defense. And so hopefully the Titans, because the Seahawks, you know, their defense isn't anything. It's no law. It's no Legion of boom any longer. So, you know, I do, uh, hopefully we can see a little more out of that Titans offense, Um, but Seattle all the way. Certainly. And Tennessee has got to figure things out. As you mentioned, they, that, Outside of the Green Bay Packers, they may have been the biggest disappointment in week one. Now, going to Seattle is no easy task for any team, and I'm with you. Like, Seattle, they know what they are. They they have an identity. Tennessee is still trying to figure that part out because yeah. they went super run heavy. I, I wasn't impressed with, with the game plan or anything that Tennessee did last week, and they should look better just – naturally because they looked horrible for week one but seattle's not where they're gonna get that first w of the season not against russell wilson not against such a veteran team Pete carroll he's been there forever as well it's it's the stability and seattle almost always starts off hot very true very true there we go we're on lockstep on that one now i wonder which direction you'll go on this one we've got three games left try and get through them and in a good, in decent time, uh, 
the Cowboys at the Chargers, Mr. Aaron. I find this one fascinating um, because the Cowboys can't go 0 and 2, but but they're going to LA, and that Chargers team is no joke. What, 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 how, how do you see this going down? I mean, uh, fantasy wise, I'm I, I'm thinking we're going to get plenty of points. I could oh. see this being a bit of a shootout, if you ask me. So, how do you see this going? Well, the crazy thing is, ever since the Thursday night football game, they they lost one of their offensive linemen, what they're starting right tackle, Leo Collins, mm-hmm. to he got suspended. Yeah, five um, games, is it? Five games. Yeah. Five games. And then there was news that came out today at practice that defensive end Demarcus Lawrence, he broke his foot. And the Cowboys, oh. their their defense was trash last year. And it's young this year. And young means, of course, that it's – you're going to take – there's Growing pains. some bumps. Yeah, exactly. Growing pains, you take some bumps – and Demarcus Lawrence, he is he is the Cowboys' defense. Like we go as far as he goes, and now he's out. So this is a pretty easy one for me. Give me the Chargers. The Chargers looked great. They showed me exactly what I wanted to see. the The offensive line, I was like, "Oh, is it going to take time to gel?" They did a phenomenal job against Washington. That has a really good pass rush, and man, Justin Herbert really don't want to ever bet against him at home so for me it's an easy one the 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 crazy thing is the spread the chargers are a three and a half point favorite and i'm like oh man with all this news here the cowboys and and demarcus lawrence like i'll i will definitely take three and a half points with the chargers i'm I'm gonna continue to think because i'm half tempted to go dallas just to be contrarian uh (laughs) Just because, let me put it this way. I just feel like Dak's on a mission and that offense can do some crazy shit. And I know, no Gallup, I think they'll be fine. I understand the offensive lineman, that hurts. Uh, yeah, Lawrence sucks for the defensive side of the ball, but I don't think, I did like, <clears throat> I don't think that defense was going to be that crazy anyway. So I just feel like, it, you know, they could be in a similar situation. They were Thursday night against the Bucks, And, you know, Justin Herbert's great. The Chargers are great, but they're not the Bucks. So maybe the Cowboys can pull it off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait till the very end to, do, to make my official pick on that one. But then we got the Chiefs at the Ravens. And you know what? I was talking earlier, and this is all I'm going to say about this one, about how even the best teams – they're not going, in my opinion, no, no one's going undefeated. Even the best teams, they've got to lose a game here and there eventually. I think the Chiefs lose here to the Ravens. It's in Baltimore. Lamar Jackson is really pissed off about his fumbling last week. And uh, I know their defense is banged up. It's not the same. They're missing dudes. I, I get it. But I just think the Ravens are going to find a way to get this done. They're going to control the clock. They, they, I think their run game, I believe, will get better as the season goes along, as new guys get acclimated, et cetera, et cetera. I think Latavius Murray, you know, okay during the Thursday night game but or during the, the week one game, but I think he's going to get better as the season goes. So I just feel like this is one of those that uh, the Chiefs are going to lose. Um, I don't know why. I just I – just, yeah, but fantasy wise, <laughs> play your dudes, really, because this could be a very fun game. Chiefs at Ravens, they usually are. Right. And I would not be shocked with Baltimore winning because a thing that does catch my attention is that the spread with all the injuries and everything happening to Baltimore, that Kansas City is just a three and a half point favorite get it they're on the road that definitely plays a part but you're right the the environment plays a part and baltimore was on the other side of this just last week where they were a road favorite going into another stadium the noise certainly affected the the way they performed and it will come down to 
both coaches have coached with their teams for a while. They've also coached in the NFL for quite a while. These coaches have lasted this long because they're good at game planning. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a battle of whose game plan is better, but I just can't bet against Patrick Mahomes. Right. So it's it, the game intrigues me. I'm so <clears> glad <throat> that this is this is the Sunday yeah. night football game, right? It is the Sunday night football game. Yes, this is the and, Sunday night game. And I am I'm pumped. That is such a perfect way to end Sunday is Kansas City and Baltimore. But yeah, I will say those those injuries are are piling up even more for Baltimore. Give me Kansas City. I 100 percent um, disagree on this one, <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I really can't disagree with a lot of what you're saying, but I think when it comes down to it, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to roll, I'm going to roll with the Ravens. I feel like they're going to get it. And it, it did, it did make me a little concerned. It does seem like Tyron Matthew should be back for this week. And when he's out of that defense, like, He's so important for that defense. So with him back, it gives me a little bit of a pause uh, if he's going to be back. But I'm, I'm going to stick with Baltimore. I think I'm going to go back to the Cowboys Chargers, and I'm going to go with the Chargers because I pretty much agreed with you there. But I consider going contrarian, but I, I'm going to be honest. If I'm going to I'm going to take the other side with you in the Baltimore KC game, I'm going to go ahead and take the Chargers uh, at home. So last one, very easy, Monday night game. But uh, very easy for me. Uh, it's the Packers. Lions okay. at the Packers. It's at Lambeau. Monday night. Aaron Rodgers is going to be pissed. I know some people think like he looks like he's all acting like the dude from Lebowski now, and <laughs> he seems laid back and like uh, it's one game. We don't care. Like there's some you know talking about it, but I. I'm not worried about the Packers. I think they'll be fine. And, uh, it, you know, it could be a little interesting. The, 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 the Lions were feisty last week against the Niners. So we'll see how it ends up. But I do think uh, we're going to get some angry Aaron Rodgers. I think he's going to go out there and dice that Lions team up. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not going to be contrarian. <laughs> Let's be <laughs> these far here, folks. Yes, they got their, their tails kicked last week, but Green Bay, they're going to figure it out. They're going to handle a team that they absolutely can and should and will beat. New Orleans was, was probably a trap game last week because mm. they didn't really consider too much of the impact of Sean Payton, good coaching. Detroit, Dan Campbell, well, I, he's not exactly a rookie head coach. He has coached some as like an intern head coach, but we don't have much of a track record. Give me Aaron Rodgers. Like we just have to forget week one. There, there wasn't much to take off that game. Like Green Bay stopped playing their starters uh, in like the third quarter there. Clean slate here. Green Bay is going to win this game. I agree. I agree. And you brought up the the Saints again, uh, being the Packers opponents. I just want to say, I highly suggest uh, people put Marquez Callaway in their lineups. I think he's going to have a bounce back week. That's just one one little nugget for you, if you ask me. Marquez Callaway's coming back. He had to, he went up against Jair Alexander. Alexander, get, get, give him a break, right? For last week, come on. Absolutely, and, and in fact. What was that? We talked about it, and I talked about it with the EDG on his show uh, that I joined him for this week, where we talked about overreactions, mm. and and Callow is perfect one. We talked about like waivers. I think we talked about waivers, and it's not always the initial uh, the initial waivers that interest me. It's that people drop players. Oh, yeah. A perfect example is. Cordero Patterson in a couple of leagues Cordero Patterson was dropped and I'm like I don't know this could end up being the Falcon and I know it's the Falcons but he could end up being their number one back at some point this year a a starting running back with pass catching ability and the team should be playing from behind yeah I can get behind that and I had leagues where AJ Dillon got dropped and that's why you don't draft yeah don't don't draft handcuffs let other teams draft handcuffs at that price tag and then they're going to drop them and then hey go Go and go and pick up AJ Dillon. If if you really liked AJ Dillon, this this is what you do with handcuffs. That's right. 
100%. Well said, my friend. Oh, any final thoughts before we get out of here? Man, it's, I hope these games are as good as tonight's game. I know on paper it didn't seem like it was going to be good, but people that watch the game, it had everything you wanted. Back and forth football and a crazy ending, of course. Oh, yeah. And those afternoon games are going to be fire. Yep, there's some good ones this week. There is some good ones. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening, watching. Sorry you only see one face. I'm sorry we're missing Aaron's beard. It will be back next week along with the rest of you. All right, buddy. We're going to get the hell out of here. You take care. Good luck for Sunday, everyone. Stay safe, stay vigilant, stay mad as always. And we'll talk to you on the Sunday. And uh, enjoy the foosball, everybody. He's out.